After finishing Pokemon Gaia, I feel very unsure about what game to cover on my channel next. There are many great Pokemon ROM hacks I could have made a video about, like Pokemon Insurgents, Reborn or Glazed, but suddenly I got the urge to return to my channel's roots and to cover one of the most OG ROM hacks of the community, Pokemon Fire Red Omega, and boy have I forgotten just how great this game is. Released in 2009, being Driano's first attempt at ROM hacking in a time where Pokemon ROM hacks were still rather new. Fire Red Omega is one of the OG games, and though it arguably has been overshadowed by newer ROM hacks in popularity like Renegade Platinum, Volt White and Emerald Kaizo, which is dumb as Kaizo is not a good game in my opinion, and yes I will be covering Emerald Kaizo again at some point. Fire Red Omega was really far ahead of his time, and in my opinion, after playing through this game once more for old time's sake, I miss this game. It's just as fantastic as I remember, and though it isn't as fancy or innovative like newer Fire Red hacks like Pokemon Nameless Fire Red, Omega still holds up to this day, and is definitely worth a shot if you haven't played it already. There's a lot to analyse about this game, but in short, what really separates this game from other iterations is that while it does improve on the base Fire Red and adds to it, at the same time, it feels very authentic and doesn't completely change the game from a mechanical standpoint. All the old school generation 3 mechanics in Pokemon are here, with only a few minor buffs and changes. While most of the generation 3 mechanics, like the old physical special split system, the fact that many Pokemon were just unbalanced by nature and just less viable compared to others, and single use TMs are all still here, it makes the game feel true to the original and pretty authentic. Well, most would argue that these features were dated and unbalanced, which to be honest, they kind of were. Game Freak removed these for a good reason. I miss playing with the original Pokemon, unchanged. The old physical special split that I used in my childhood was pretty nostalgic to see again. Omega simply adds more Pokemon in difficulty to a classic game, making it better with more stuff, but keeping the core mechanics of that game intact. To me, this game felt like the definitive Fire Red experience in Generation 3, Yes, Nameless Fire Red is amazing, but it really changes the game into something else. It's its own thing, and should be compared differently. Omega, on the other hand, simply allows us to relive our childhood favourite, with some improvements, while still making the game a nostalgia trip. A lot of players in the community have said how they personally don't like it when the ROM hack takes too many liberties of the base game, and don't like the idea of adding future generation Pokemon to older games, like how Nameless Fire Red added Gen 6 Pokemon. I can understand how you might find it weird where you can find a bundle B in Generation 3, so I understand that. If you fall into this category, then you'll appreciate Fire Red Omega, as it does make a few changes, but it doesn't change the game too much to where it's unrecognisable. This is still authentic to the original game that it's based on. If you've never experienced the old Generation 3 games like I did back in like 2006, then Fire Red Omega is definitely worth a shot, as it does fix some of the issues of the original Fire Red and is almost literally the same game, but just better and way more fun to play. I'll be explaining why this game still holds up to this day, then I'll talk about any potential criticisms, though there aren't too many to talk about. Now before I go into more depth about this game, I'll recap what Fire Red Omega improves from the original. The mechanics are mostly untouched, and there aren't too many quality of life changes added. The changes are more to do with streamlining and adding more things in the game, without changing it completely. The first and arguably most important change is that now in this game you start off with the National Dex. All original 386 Pokemon are obtainable here. Being the first ROM hack I ever played, this feature blew me away, and while newer games have blown this number out of the water, the fact that I can play my childhood favourite with all my original favourite Pokemon was so fun as I was never able to do this on the original Fire Red, more than doubling the Pokemon in the base game. This added so much choice, options, team building and replayability. The fact that I never played a Johto game prior to this meant that I never got to use a lot of the original Gen 3 Pokemon, and this game gave me so many new Pokemon to play with. Also, while I have mentioned this before, I cannot express how much I love the fact that all trade evolutions and version exclusives are now obtainable in this one game, without the need to trade. Thank god for that. Finally I get to experience Fire Red with Machamp, Alkazam and Gengar. And even newer additions like Gorbis and Huntail 
which were such a pain to get in the original Hoenn games. This natural text from the start was especially fun for Nuzlocking, but even for normal playthroughs also, due to how diverse the first few areas of the game were, which I need to give a lot of credit for. Nameless Fire Red had over 700 Pokemon in it, which is a huge amount, but a lot of people, including myself, noticed how despite that huge number, many of the routes in that game felt kind of empty in a way, anyone who's played that game will know what I'm talking about. The game was purposely made so no one route would be overcrowded. The issue with that was that the early game was kind of annoying as the few Pokemon that were available weren't very viable for the first gym, and it made replaying the game less interesting as at first you would almost always run into the same few Pokemon over and over again and would continue to do so throughout the game. Omega is different as the first few areas alone were very diverse with a very large amount of different Pokemon that you could catch before even entering the first gym, adding a huge amount of replay value especially for Nuzlocking as you can restart the run 10 times and have a unique starting team every single time. Well, it is true that all the conventionally weak early game Pokemon from the first few generations are still here like Puchena, Rattata and Caterpie and such. Unfortunately, these mons were really not viable at this point and they're still not very good in Fire Red Omega. Despite this, there were however, lots of really useful and viable Pokemon that you can get before even entering Viridian Forest. Houndoom, Nidorans, Dodu, Staryu, Barboat, Shroomish, Ralts, Mareep, and even Clamperl, and many more. Such a huge variety of types and useful Pokemon, many of which can be extremely useful at some point. And while encountering something like a Rattata may be annoying as, unfortunately, it is simply power crept in the late game, at least with Dupe Claws and Nuzlocks, it does free it up from later areas. If you're doing a normal playthrough then that's not really an issue, you'll have a huge amount of control over your starting team, and can even craft a team potent and balanced enough to beat the entire game if you wanted to, just from the first two routes. Brock especially can be trivialised if you prepare properly, despite him being pretty challenging normally. But if you're Nuzlocking, this is so much fun as a single encounter clause adds a lot of tension to your playthrough and there are so many different possible combinations of Pokemon that you can use. You have no idea what you're going to get in the first few routes. You'll almost always get a starting team that you've never used before, making every playthrough feel unique. The fact that you get the old rod so early on in this game, and the fact that most towns have grass in them, makes Nuzlocking even more convenient to do. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that all starter Pokemon are now given to you as gifts. So you can get all three Hoenn starters before the first gym if you want to. And even after the first gym, as you progress further and further throughout the game, you'll keep finding more and more viable Pokemon to use. And you know, speaking of starters, I forgot to mention one of my absolute favourite things about this game, the starter Pokemon. And I'm not talking about the conventional ones like Bulbasaur and Charmander, oh no. In this game, you begin your journey with Magby, Elekid or Smoochum, which is completely different from any other ROM hack, and a really fresh set of Pokemon to use. I guess rather than being based off the classic fire, water, grass setup, they're based off the elemental punches, and arguably there's still a bit of rock, paper, scissor interaction going on here, as Electabuzz is usually able to beat Magmar. Magmar obviously beats Jinx, and Jinx can usually beat Electabuzz. But what makes these Pokemon really noteworthy is how they got seriously buffed in this game, making all three of these Pokemon big threats, feeling like proper powerhouses to use. All of their forms got plus 10 added to all stats, along with a vastly improved move pool, such as getting all elemental punches and even new signature moves. I don't know what it is, but I just adored using the starter trio. Maybe it's a nostalgia of being my first ROM hack that I've ever played. They're Pokemon which look really cool, but at the same time, I never get to use them in playthroughs in the base games, so it's really nice that in this ROM hack, they're very viable. The fact that they're new to me adds a lot of replay value, especially as they're all very viable and powerful in this game, compared to the other Pokemon that you encounter. Electabuzz could be argued to be the best starter, due to how its speed stat is extremely high now with the plus 10, with a respectable special attack stat also, and a huge variety of coverage options. Thunderbolt, all elemental punches, which are special in this game, Thunder Wave, Psychic, some physical moves like Cross Chop, and even Volt Tackle as a new signature move. I definitely got some newfound appreciation for this Pokemon. 
Now, Magmar is arguably the least viable of the trio, but still very strong regardless. The reason why is because stat-wise Magmar has by far the highest physical attack stat, even though despite that, it's still better off as a special attacker, making that extra physical attack a bit wasted. That being said, Magmar has most of the same moves as Electabuzz, except it gets Flamethrower instead of Thunderbolt. Basically, Magmar is significantly slower than Electabuzz, though still pretty fast, but it also hits a little bit harder as well. But despite that, many people will say that Jinx is the strongest starter. Good god, this thing could be monstrous. Yes, its physical defense is really low, even with the plus 10 buff. Its special stats are insanely high, making it a huge threat. Not only does it have incredible coverage with dual stab, it also has access to sweet and lovely kits for some hacks abuse. Cal Mind to set up an instant win, and Cycle Boost is a signature move if you need that extra power. Anyone who's played with Elkid as their starter will know just how scary your rival Smoochum can be to deal with, as it's so powerful and requires genuine strategy to counter it effectively. Despite this, I love all three of these starters, you can't go wrong with any of them. You cannot obtain the other starters that you did not choose, so make sure you pick carefully. As for other gameplay changes, there aren't too many of them. There are a few quality of life changes such as getting access to new items which you couldn't have done before like the lucky egg, it's a lot more easy to get now, and a decent amount of balance changes but not too many. A few Pokemon got slightly improved such as how Victory Bell and Blossom can now learn Leaf Blade by levelling up which is really nice, TM Dig got buffed, Macargo got a special attack buff along with Corsola getting some stats increased. There are some buffs and rebalances but nowhere near to the extent of games like Renegade Platinum where almost every Pokemon got revamped in some way. This game is still pretty authentic with only a few Pokemon getting improved, though arguably more Pokemon could have gotten buffed as quite a few Pokemon are just as unviable as they were in the base games unfortunately. Anyone who's experienced with this game knows about the difficulty in this ROM hack. This was what really set it apart from other ROM hacks for its time and we go on to expire other great Pokemon games like Emerald Omega and Renegade Platinum. This game is hard, but at the same time, it never feels unfair. It's a very good test of your skills as a Nuzlocker, if that's how you're playing. Yes, the boss battles in this game are so much stronger than they originally were in the base games, but they never feel overpowered and the game always gives you what you need to handle them. True enough, the gym leaders do have better items and good TMs, but at the same time, your Pokemon can gain EVs and they can't, just like in the base game, which does even out the playing field. Brock, for example, does have crazy strong Pokemon on his team like a Vulpix and an Onix, which can really abuse RNG like crazy, but his other Pokemon are lower leveled and can easily be destroyed by using the free Trico that you can get beforehand. Though in the late game, your rival especially becomes very scary to deal with and you'll need to be very skilled to handle him effectively. I like how he feels like a genuine threat, as he should be, he is your rival after all, which adds a lot of tension when battling him, whereas in Fire Red, he really wasn't that much of a big deal. His own starter that he picks is really scary either way and really hard to deal with, and his endgame team is very well designed. There were some boss battles who had genuinely well thought out strategies such as baton passing, using defense boosting moves and counter and so on. Don't let your guard down in the boss battles, but I will say also that be very careful of using stat boosting moves as they can trivialize the game just like they can in the mainline games. Unfortunately the AI is kind of limited, it's always been like that. In one run I abused the hell out of Dragon Dance Gyarados and it was way too overpowered so only abuse stuff like this if you purposely want to trivialize the game. Now one of the things that I was wanting to discuss in this video was how Fire Red Omega didn't incorporate the newer mechanics that would get introduced later on in the series like how Gen 4 introduced a physical special split or Gen 5 brought in the infinite TMs and other new balance changes. This game feels like a Gen 3 experience through and through and while most would argue that things like the old physical special split was outdated, I did enjoy getting to experience it once again. To be honest, it's not all that bad like other people would say it is and though it did lead to some really weird balancing, I guess an analogy to describe this would be like how I played Elder Scrolls Skyrim first, then after that I went back to the older game Oblivion, and while Oblivion was very dated, especially for Skyrim's time, 
I could still appreciate a lot of the older mechanics as it was very different from what it was in Skyrim and if nothing else is a fresh experience. The old physical special split in Pokemon where all moves of a given type would be based off a specific attack stat was pretty controversial and in hindsight a lot of people would grow to hate it. For the most part, it served only to gimp lots of Pokemon. The fact that all dark moves were based off of your special attack was especially dumb considering that most dark types were specifically meant to be physical attackers like Absol and Crawdont. They got really gimped by this system. But for some reason, Bite was a special attacking move which was really weird. Ghost type moves being based off of your physical attack was really dumb, especially because of how Pokemon like Gengar had no usable stab moves due to his physical attack stat being awful. Same goes for special attacking dragon type moves, which was made worse by the move pool back then was a lot more limited than it was in Gen 4. Game Freak would fix this problem in Generation 4 with good reason as these Pokemon that I mentioned, like Gengar and Absol, suddenly became way better like they were originally meant to be with the addition of the physical special split. You could argue that some Pokemon like Houndoom were better off in Generation 3 system because Crunch was special so he could take advantage of that, as Crunch was the only viable dark move in Generation 3, but Gen 4 would remedy this by adding Dark Pulse and Crunch, making both physical and special attacking dark type Pokemon happy. While the old Generation 3 split was interesting to see again, I totally get how a lot of people didn't like it in the end. However, were any Pokemon actually better off without the physical special split? That's not something you hear people discussing. Most people acknowledge how Pokemon like Gyarados got gimped without the physical special split, but there were a few Pokemon that did legitimately prefer the old system. The Fire Red Omega starters all thrived without the physical special split specifically because they were all special attackers. Yeah, you could use physical attacking Magmar with things like Cross Chop, but why bother? The fact that they all got access to the elemental punches early on, which were special in this game, gave them amazing coverage because of that, being able to hit so many things super effectively. Another good example is how Alkazam also got access to the elemental punching moves in this game, letting it easily destroy lots of Pokemon with its super high special attack stat, which it wouldn't have been able to do in Generation 4. Though these cases of Pokemon being better off under the Gen 3 system are pretty rare though. Generation 3 is old now by our standards and has been outdated in a lot of ways. The balancing is such as how a lot of Pokemon's move pools were really bad, which was made worse by how TMs were only single use back then and couldn't be rebrought. This was a very annoying feature. Poison type Pokemon like Arbok literally had no good moves to use. The only strong poison type move that you could get was TM Sludge Bomb, which was pretty strong. But you could only get that TM from the post game after you've already beaten the champion, which is really dumb and it's also made worse by the fact that it's single use. So basically, if you want to use something like an Arbok in your playthrough, you have to use HM Strength as its strongest move. Just lovely. Beedrill also had to rely on like Signal Beam as its strongest move, which it only learned once it was already a really high level, but at that point there would be absolutely no point in using Beedrill as it would be so power crept at that point. This lack of balance in a lot of Pokemon made Nuzlocke in the game feel pretty frustrating at times, especially late game as even though you caught a lot of Pokemon in your PC, a lot of them at that point will not be very viable. Damn, and to think that there are a lot of people who think that infinite TMs was a bad idea. The idiots. These make up the majority of the complaints that I've got for this game. The lack of balancing, single use TMs and how a lot of Pokemon got gimped by the lack of physical special split. Another possible complaint is that at some points, depending on the player, the grinding process in this game can be a bit of a pain, but this really depends from person to person. Personally for me the grinding was actually pretty fast because I was able to play Fire Red Omega on an emulator which had 1000% speed up to make grinding so much faster than it would have been otherwise. But if you don't use speed up, then the grinding will be pretty slow for you. You can get a lucky egg in the mid game easily in this game, so there's that, and there are rematchable trainers after the 7th gym who use Blissey, so that does make grinding a lot more convenient. And while the post game Elite 4 is very, very high leveled, you can get access to a grinding spot of level 100 Blisseys to make grinding pretty much effortless like in Renegade Platinum. If you're Nuzlocke in this game, you'll need to get used to grinding unless you're extremely good at this game 
and you can just sweep everything without losing any Pokemon. But be warned, if you're Nuzlocke in this game blind, then don't be surprised if you lose a lot of times, because I sure as hell have. As I'm approaching the end of this video, it's hard for me to explain to you why Fire Red Omega had such an impact on me compared to other ROM hacks I've played. Maybe it's a fact that this game was the very first Pokemon ROM hack that I've ever played. I think I started playing it about 10 years ago when I was still in school. And because Fire Red was the first Pokemon game I ever played, it was such a nostalgic experience. It is true that many people naturally feel very attached to games that they played as children a long time ago. Which can explain why a lot of old games like for example, the original Final Fantasy, get a lot more recognition than it deserves. Even though the game is objectively a broken mess, people just like it as it was the very first Final Fantasy game, so it does get a lot of nostalgia points for that. So maybe I am being overly nostalgic towards Driano's Fire Red Omega, and maybe you might not agree with my assessment. Despite that, I'll stand by and say that this is one of my all time favourite Pokemon games, Yes, it doesn't do any of the crazy stuff that games like Pokemon Clover did, but Omega is a game that is very simple at its core, giving a true generation 3 experience in a greatly improved version of the original Fire Red. Cause let's be honest, the OG Fire Red it was a good game and all, but it had almost negligible difficulty in a much smaller variety of Pokemon. The replay value of Omega means that I've got a reason to return to this game again and again over time. When I finally managed to Nuzlocke my way to Elite Four for the first time in my gruelling extreme Nuzlocke challenge, battled my way through the gauntlet and won, it was such a tense experience. And I don't know what it is, but there's something about this post game that just captivates me. Maybe it's the upbeat and relaxing music. It's such a cool feeling where even though you become the champion in this really hard game, there's still so much to explore and to do in this game, and even greater challenges to aim for. Beating the post game after going through so much my Nuzlocke, so many casualties and near losses again and again, was almost emotional for me, similar to my experience with Renegade Platinum and Pokemon Clover. Unlike the base Fire Red, the final boss in Omega is truly worthy of being your rival and felt like a genuine final battle. This game was such an experience for me and I damn recommend it to everyone if you haven't played it already. This pretty much concludes the video and I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for my next video and if you like this style of video then support it so I can make more like this. Next video will most likely be an extreme nuzlocke of this game as last time I technically didn't complete the entire run, I did fail at the very end. So until then, stay tuned for the next video, this is Ding Dong, signing out.